what are we doing with our lives? We are doing limits. Uh, with luck, we'll be done with limits today. And we'll move on to very exciting stuff. <clears throat> so, uh, we were talking about limits at infinity. Um, and today I'm going to do examples. So I'm still in section 2.6. So yesterday, the, the last thing I said was this very important limit of the the arctangent. Uh, the, the arctangent approaches pi over two as, as x approaches infinity. And it's an odd function. So a negative infinity is going to approach the opposite. Um, the most important limit of all <clears throat> is that is the limit of uh, I'm pretty sure this is the most important 1 over x to the r so if I take 1 over x to a positive power or what's the same uh, to say the same thing uh, x to a negative power then the then the denominator gets bigger and bigger um, and the whole fraction becomes one divided by a very large number and that approach is zero Zoomed in for some reason. I'm so zoomed in. So, what I'm saying is that as I go off to the right, uh, this this uh, graph becomes basically the same as the x-axis. If I make the exponent bigger. If I make the exponent bigger, the graph gets way closer to the x-axis. Um, it decreases faster because the numbers in the denominator are getting bigger. If I if I make it smaller, then the numbers aren't growing nearly as fast. So um, we we are further from the x-axis, although we are approaching zero. The thing is, it takes way longer to get there. Like here, we're at 0 0.4, but I promise you that no matter how small you make this number, as long as it's positive, the denominator is going to approach infinity and the whole fraction is going to approach zero. So what happens at negative infinity? At negative infinity, uh, well, here we are dividing by, by again, a large number. Sometimes that number is positive because sometimes we we take a negative number and we square it. This is the same as one fifth. Um, sometimes it's negative, and sometimes it um, it doesn't exist. <clears throat> so, if you take one over the square root of x or x to the negative one half, there's just nothing to write on the left. Because um, to compute the function, I would have to take the root of a negative number, and I can't do that. So, um, so the conclusion is that the limit at negative infinity is also zero whenever uh, it makes sense. So. The limit 
when we approach negative infinity or one over x to the r is zero if r of r or or if r uh, is a rational number. I guess um, it's a R is a fraction for which um, this makes sense, which basically means that the denominator has to be an odd number. Um, of those square roots. So, um, so that's another example, the last one that I need to, the last example out of the, the simple functions that we know is e to the x. e to the x also has a horizontal asymptote. <clears throat> and I think you know where it is because I think you know what e to the x looks like because everything, every function that looks like a curve, you tell me it's exponential. So, um, it approaches zero on the if we go go off to the left. And this should make sense. I think. Because of the um, of the exponent loss. E to the x is one divided by either negative x um, <clears throat> because the dividing is the same as multiplying with the opposite exponents. Uh, if x is large and negative, then negative x um, is also large, but now uh, it's positive. And I know that um, I know that the exponential of a large number is also large. So I'm taking one divided by a very large number, uh, and this is going to approach zero. And that's it. And I should probably. Uh, join the meeting with another device, shouldn't I, in case everything crashes? I feel like half the days I forget to do that. Are there any questions? Are there any, are there, are there anyone? So like, okay, so, in these situations, it's going to approach zero pretty much. Like, uh, okay, I'm just like, okay, so, so like with these examples, are you just like showing us uh, um, like examples without like actually like solving it or like finding a way to solve it first? Or just like, you're just like graphing it to show us like these what are, it looks like? These are kind of the examples to keep in your brain to just like, no, but from memory, you know. I feel like every time you see one of these five limits, you should know what the answer is, and it should be just because you know, you know, say it's on, it's in the book. So these are, you know, these limits are kind of the limits we use to compute other limits. 
Um, now I'm going to work through some using these. Okay. Okay, so here's a typical limit problem. Um, the limit of a rational function. So um, a rational function is a polynomial divided by another polynomial, which means that the the numerator gets the, the the polynomials always get large unless they're constant, in which case they don't do anything. Um, so both the numerator and the denominator are getting very large. <clears throat> so infinity divided by infinity doesn't mean anything. Uh, I mean, I mean, it means what I just said. It means the numerator and denominator are getting very large. So um, if we say infinity divided by infinity, that's just, I mean, it means I have no clue what's going on because you could divide a large number by a very large number and get anything because, you know, are you dividing a thousand by a million? So you're getting a tiny number or are you dividing a million by a thousand? So you're getting a huge number or are you dividing a thousand by a thousand, so you're getting an intermediate uh, size number, or are you oscillating between these? Um, so there's just no way of knowing. When you see infinity divided by infinity, uh, I know in high school, I might, might have told you this is in, in the terminacy. <laughs> just, what, what it means is that we have no clue. We have to do something with this. So one thing that often works with these, um, so one thing that works is um, looking at um, maybe the the biggest term and dividing by it. So So try to make, so I can divide the, the numerator and the denominator by the same thing and not change the function. So try to divide by something that will make the limits not infinity. Um, and the simplest thing to try, I should try the simplest thing because I'm lazy and that's a very good quality. So uh, the question is which power of x? <clears throat> and well, they're both. So um, the, the intuition here is that x cubed is more important than x and then x squared because it's going, it's going faster. Um, I guess I said polynomials go to infinity always, but that's not, that's not true. Yeah. Negative x squared goes to negative infinity. They always go to positive or negative infinity. Uh, but the thing is, the numerator <clears throat> is gonna is gonna go to infinity, which is maybe another limit I should do. Let's do it. So how do I know that this limit is infinity? Uh, well, this limit, um, if x gets very large, x cubed gets very large, but then x gets very large. And now I have this BS where I'm taking a very large number and subtracting a very large number. And just like what was happening here, doesn't mean I'm taking a million divided by a thousand or a thousand divided by, a, uh, sorry, now it would be a thousand minus a million or a million minus a thousand or a thousand minus a thousand. Like this could be doing anything. I have no idea what this is doing. So I have to rewrite this somehow. But this is pretty, this is pretty simple to rewrite. 
if I realize, I can just uh, pull out a common factor of x cubed in here. So if I pull out x cubed, what, what's left inside? Oh boy. Oof. Three minus one. What would you put for that other one? Three plus one. So I'm supposed to, so you're on the right track there. Um, this is Would it just be three? Uh, well, it's three and then plus some other stuff. So, so that these are equal, I need to multiply and divide by the same thing. So now the question is how do I divide this fraction? I uh, need to divide everything by x cubed, right? If you, if you have three plus two divided by four, this is three fourths plus two fourths. Um, if if I eat a third of the cake and you eat a third of the cake, together we feed on two thirds of the cake. Uh, so this is, of course you're, you're allowed to skip steps here, but you can only do that if you're not gonna make a mistake. So why not just be safe? Uh, so, this is the distributive law of multiplication. So three X cubed divided by three is um, three. Then I have one over X uh, squared, and then I have one over X cubed. So that's the, so that's it. And now I can, I can run well, not plug in infinity, but I can look at this and see where this is going. This is going to infinity. And this is going to, well, I have all these um, positive powers of, of x in the denominator. And this is the limit I was just talking about. Really important limit. One over x to anything approaches zero, anything positive. So, um, so this is approaching three minus zero plus zero. And now I know that if you take a huge number and you multiply it by three, it stays huge. So uh, this limit is infinity. Okay, so that wasn't the limit I set out to compute. Uh, that was just the limit of the numerator. Uh, but it's worth noticing that for any polynomial, um, the, the answer for what the limit is at infinity is it's going to do whatever the smallest term does. <clears throat> and the rest of the terms pretty much still matter. So, um, so what can I do with, I'm going to go to the next page. Um, Okay, so what do I divide this by to make it not infinity divided by infinity? That's a question for the audience. Factor it first. I don't want to factor it. Um, first of all, that's a cubic polynomial. I. The, I mean, do you know the formula? I have seen it at some point in my life, but I don't remember it. Um, and it's just it's not gonna it's not gonna get me anything. Right now. If I you know. 
if I had a polynomial that I knew how to factor. How is this limit easier? Uh, this limit is infinity times infinity divided by infinity times infinity, which is just absolute sadness. I have no idea what to do with this. X cubed. Yeah, X cubed is the answer. Um, so factoring for a limit at infinity, factoring doesn't really do anything because this is very nice because I know that this vanishes at X equals negative two and X equals one. I know this vanishes at X equals zero and X equals negative three, but I don't care where it's zero. I, I care what's happening um, very far away from one and negative two. So this is not useful. Uh, the good news is that it's easier than factoring. X cubed. Um, because if, uh, well, I'm dividing by the most important thing. So three X cubed is gonna become just three and the rest is probably not gonna be, um, not gonna be anything annoying. So, okay. Now, if we mess up the algebra, um, it's just gonna be sadness all around. So let's not, because if you mess up the algebra, you could get any answer. So not messing up the algebra means we have to divide everything by X cubed. Maybe it's better if we don't divide it in our heads because I mean, sure, we all, we all like to skip steps because we get bored, but um, then we make mistakes. Okay, so X cubed divided by X cubed is one. And then remember when you divide, when you divide uh, two exponentials, the exponents uh, get subtracted. So this is X to the negative two, one over X squared. This looks, already looks simple to me. Um, Here we have X squared divided by X cubed. That becomes just X. Uh, and this already looks simple to me. So this limit, uh, this limit is great. Um, I can do this, I can do this limit. Uh, this is approaching, so everything I'm circling looks like something divided by, something divided by a positive power of X is gonna approach zero. Um, and if something approaches zero, negative five times that, you take negative five and multiply it by a tiny number, you still get zero. So the limit of this stuff over here is um, three zero zero. It's just three. No, it's just three because everything else was zero. So what we did there basically we killed everything that wasn't the most important term and and that finished the problem. So how to choose the X, the, the this power we divided by probably, um, I mean, look at the highest term, look at the highest term in the numerator and the denominator. Um, and, and the thing is, what happens if you divide by a power that doesn't work? Nothing happens, you lost some time, uh, but you can just try a different one. So this limit is three. Any questions? But why one over X to the R? Because it's a simple thing and I, thought it was going to simplify things um, because I don't have any better ideas is the answer. Like, could you divide, you could divide by anything you wanted, but you know, dividing by a more complicated function, there, there's nothing else I can think of that would make it simpler. 
like I see where are the fractions zero again? The fractions approach zero because one divided by any positive power of x approaches zero. And that is super important and super useful. What the hell is the M2 bottom? Um, so this is something we're going to use over and over. Uh, every any anything that looks like a number divided by positive power of x approaches zero at infinity, um, because these are. I was just drawing all of these graphs. They're all approaching zero. Um, because and the, for all of them, you're dividing by a number that approaches infinity. You're dividing one by a number that approaches infinity. Uh, so, so that's it. Okay, this is pretty important. So let's do let's do another example. Um, uh, hopefully, doing enough examples, you should be convinced that we can do the limit of any rational function. Um, to x. Um, Okay, so just to make it interesting, I've, I've factored the denominator. So we don't have to, we don't have to factor it now, but it's just not gonna be the most useful thing. Okay, so I look at this, I look at this problem and I think, well, I think I have a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And when I have a polynomial, it's gonna it's gonna do whatever the most important the, the biggest term does. So x to the fourth is going to infinity much faster. It's going to infinity much faster than uh, these are doing anything. Think of you know if you make x equals to a thousand or a hundred, you have one, two, three, four. You make x equals to 100, you have a whole lot more zeros for x to the fourth than for x squared. So the only thing that matters is x to the fourth. Uh, and the denominator, so what's the, um, what's the degree of the denominator? The degree is the, the exponent in the biggest, the biggest exponent you can find in a polynomial. Two, it's not two, sorry. You win some, you lose some. Four. That's what? I'm confused as well. The answer, the answer is three. Yeah. Um, the, so this, so what is this polynomial? Uh, this polynomial by the distributive law, this is x cubed minus x squared. And if you write it like this, um, you can see that the, the biggest term is x cubed. So the answer is three. Okay, so I have a degree four thing divided by degree three, three, three degree four divided by degree three. Um, and I, I just, I know, the polynomials of bigger than we grow faster. So I'm pretty sure this limit is gonna be um, infinity. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it doesn't mean, I know for sure we should prove this. So I'm just gonna multiply it up 
I don't want to factor it. It's just more confusing. But anyway, if you multiply two polynomials, the degrees add together. So there was a polynomial of degree one times one of degree two. The end result had degree three. So, um, okay, so to simplify this thing, like before, I should divide the numerator and denominator by something. And the important bits here are x to the fourth and x cubed. So what uh, what should I divide by? Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's going to be one of those. Um, and they're probably both going to work in the x to the fourth. I'm, I was going to go to with x cubed. x to the fourth would work, but not as nicely. Um, so I'm going to divide by x cubed. Dividing by the smallest one. Uh, dividing by the smallest one is the best choice. The, of the of the leading terms of the numerator and denominator, you want to divide by the small one. Or by the one in the denominator. No, you want to divide by the small one. <clears throat> they both work. Um, and if one doesn't work, you try the other. So, okay, I got to divide everything by x cubed, all the terms here. So x to the fourth becomes x, uh, because it loses three powers of x. x squared loses three powers, it becomes negative one. And one loses three powers of x, uh, becomes well, negative three. x cubed loses all the powers, and x squared becomes one over x. And now it looks um, it looks doable, yeah, just like before. This limit is um, well, all the all the x's in the denominator are going to approach zero. So this is a number approaching infinity, a number getting very big, divided by one. Uh, this limit is uh, positive infinity. If we had divided by x to the fourth, we would have one over zero. And the thing with one over zero is you know it's you know it's gonna not exist, but you don't know if it's positive infinity or negative infinity. And that's annoying. So that's so that's the answer. Are there any questions? So like whenever you get um, like just like the variable remaining it just becomes uh, whatever infinity uh, x is approaching, whether that be like negative or positive infinity. The variable like here where I have just x. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, if if x is large, then x is large, right? Um, uh, what is the limit of x as x approaches infinity? It's infinity. Then if I multiply this by a negative four, it becomes negative infinity. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so um, the moral of the story, there's a rule here. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's worth it to memorize it honestly like the limits I, I started the class with are definitely worth memorizing but when you when you have a rational function you can just look at it and know the limit at infinity because if you have two things of equal degree in the numerator and the denominator you get a, a number if you have bigger degree in the numerator it goes to infinity or negative infinity and if you and if you have uh, if you have something of bigger degree in the denominator, it, it just goes to zero. So, um, I guess, let me tell you, and you're free to memorize this. Um, if, 
give you for the limit of a rational function. So rational function looks like a uh, ax to the n plus um, something times x to the n minus one. So this is what a polynomial looks like, a bunch of powers of, um, a bunch of powers of x with some numbers multiplied together. And then there's, a, there's another polynomial in the denominator. Can you change the slide? Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, Sydney, let's do an example where x approaches negative infinity. So, um, okay, the limit, so it's the same except we get confused with the signs, basically. But anyway, we have a rational function. Rational functions are a polynomial divided by another polynomial. And the way polynomials look like is you have a power of x times a number, another power of x times a number. Number could be negative. Um, and then same thing in the denominator. Another number times another power of x. Uh, and then all the smaller powers of x with some numbers. Um, so the limit The, so what happens? The limit of x goes to. This works for both for positive and negative infinity. Um, what happens is that this is just the limit of, of the biggest, the quotient of the biggest terms. And this limit is way easier because that this just simplifies. Um, so, so this is, um, this is a rule that you can use. Um, so this happens, I mean, what I'm saying is uh, these are the biggest exponents. The, top one the, is the biggest one in the numerator and the, the bottom one is the biggest one appearing in the denominator. But this only works for rational functions. If you, once you start having roots, sines, cosines, uh, exponentials, and this, I'm not saying anything in those cases. Um, so for example, if I wanted to do the limit of, say, x approaches negative infinity, x to the seventh, something like this, um, and then I have, say, two x to the sixth plus four x cubed minus x. So, I mean, we like finding polynomials in order, but they don't have to be in order. So. All of these problems you can do by dividing by the numerator and denominator by something, and they're not, they don't take that long to do. So honestly, I don't, I don't like this rule that much because I don't particularly like memorizing things that I don't have to. I would just divide by x to the sixth, the numerator and denominator, but using, um, so since this is a rational function, Uh, 
I can ignore everything but the leading terms. The thing is, after doing all this dividing by x to the sixth business, you would be left with a bunch of um, a bunch of things that are approaching zero that we're going to end up ignoring. So, so where's the leading term? Well, I conveniently wrote it at the at the beginning of each polynomial. Here I have power in the numerator. I have power seven, five, three, and zero. So the most important one is seven. In the denominator, I have six, three, one, two, and zero. So the most important one is six. This limit is just the limit as it is the same limit as seven x to the seven divided by two x to the six, and and this limit is now easy. I mean, you could also memorize some places you might see something telling you divide the leading coefficients if the exponents are equal, if they're different, if the, if the, the numerator is bigger than its infinity or negative infinity, you have to be careful with that. If the denominator is bigger, then it's negative infinity, but then you have to memorize a bunch of things with the signs. I think this is better, less memorizing. Um, and now I have x to something. The only question is, is it going to be infinity or negative infinity? And as x gets very large and negative, half of x is still going to be very large and negative. So this is negative infinity. So we're done. Any questions? All right. So like in situations where like sign and stuff will be involved, will we just end up doing different things? Are we actually like divide by? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have, there's, there's no such thing as a general rule of how to do every limit. Um, the, what there is, so it's more like, it's not like you have a recipe and you follow the instructions and you get to the end. It's more like you have a toolbox and you go, uh, let me try all my tools until one works. That's how it works. So that was, so dividing, generally dividing by a thing that looks bigger, it could work if, if, it, if you have, signs and cosines or exponentials, but it could not. And then you could try another thing. Um, eventually, you, we will know enough things that you can do a lot of limits, especially using derivatives. There's a, there's a thing that works a lot of the time, um, but not a, not a, nothing works all the time. So what we do is just do a lot of examples. So, um, what am I writing? So here's another example. So, um, so the limit, uh, limit that looks like this. So this is not a rational function because rational functions don't have roots in them. Um, but this is an example where even, even if it's not a rational function here, basically there's no, there, there's no rule for these things. Eventually, you know, functions can be so wildly different that you can't start writing down every limit you can think of. However, uh, we, the strategies to translate. So this is a situation where, okay, let's see, let's see um, where things are approaching. So if x is approaching negative infinity, x cubed. So you take a very, um, you take a very large negative number. 
what happens to its cubed well, to its cube um, its cube is still negative because it's a, you take an odd power uh, you of a negative number you get a negative number so x cubed is approaching negative infinity so one minus x cubed uh, then I'm subtracting a negative number, so I'm adding a positive number. This approaches infinity, and its square root approaches infinity as well. And eventually these numbers are all positive, so the square root makes sense. Um, X is going to approach a negative infinity, so this sort of looks like infinity minus infinity divided by infinity. It's probably pretty bad. So the um, so the guess so we should try to look for what is what is approaching infinity the fastest which which numbers are larger here um, and if I think of if I follow this uh, idea which is not is nothing outside of rational functions, this is this is not anything precise or fail safe or anything like that, but it's, it's something that can give me an idea of what to do, uh, trying to ignore smaller powers of x. If I ignore smaller powers of x, I have, um, I can say, so, So I don't know what's bigger among the two things in the numerator, but uh, inside of the square root, I'm pretty sure the one is irrelevant compared to um, compared uh, to the to the x cubed, and in the denominator is almost like x squared because the smaller terms become irrelevant. So um, now I can, I can simplify the numerator a little bit. This is negative x. Um, if I take the cube and then the square root, that's the power of 3 halves. <coughs> so, um, so 3 halves is bigger than x. So probably the most important, so the, the numerator is sort of, in a way, this is sort of like x cubed, x to the 3 halves divided by x squared. So if I, if I think that this is the case, then I should be dividing by the smallest of these powers. I should be dividing by x to the 3 halves in the numerator and the denominator. And that's going to work in this case. So, of course, it works if you do the algebra, right? So we divide by the same thing in the top and the bottom. Uh, that ensures that I don't change the function. I'm, multipl I'm multiplying by 1. Uh, yeah, and I'm not going to finish this, of course. Um, So divide everything by x to the 3 halves. OK, I can do the denominator in my head. So the exponents are supposed to, I'm supposed to subtract 3 halves by the, from the exponents, because that's what dividing does. So x to the 2 minus 3 halves minus x to the 1 minus 3 halves plus x to the negative 3 halves. Um, so the, the biggest problem, the place where you're most likely to make a mistake is, is of course, the square root. Um, because there's a lot of creative ways of putting something inside of a square root, and there's only one that is correct. Um, well, it's already, I mean, the denominator is also a square root. But what 
you're supposed to do is make it the square root of the square. Uh, oof. I'm gonna be very careful. Because I don't know if this is the square root of the square. And I guess it's gonna be a click for for Monday. And the answer is that this is wrong. So um, I'm not going to get into that um, today. But that's going to be it. Oh, hope you had a good, have a good weekend. I'm going to stop the recording and hang out here.